Good morning, guys. Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. How are y'all doing? Another gorgeous day outside. I'm going to go babysit today. But I've got... I might actually make it one video. One long video. Yeah. I had subjects for two videos. I'm going to do for one video. Um, <clears throat> and they're pretty interesting. i got a bunch of information on the one part of the subject uh, specifically. But... The other part is, the, the second part of it is going to be about how the Bible is food. And I think this, this psalm is going to play off of that. This prayer is going to play off of that. Uh, the Bible is, is food. It nourishes our spirit. It nourishes our understanding. It builds up our faith. Um, it strengthens us and helps us grow into spiritual adulthood. There's a secondary effect of it, though. It actually feeds our physical form. It creates a sense of peace and well-being. It settles everything within us. Um, uh, gives us confidence. Standing in, in, in the world against pe people who are against us. Or even if you engage with a demon. It gives you knowledge and understanding of the things that are going around you. And why people do the things that they do. And what that ends up doing is with that understanding, you end up, you're, it's easier for you to forgive them for the things that they do because you know where it's coming from. <clears throat> Had a conversation with a brother last night, and that same situation arose. And you forgive. You forgive and, and you move on. Um, it, it does, the word does so many things in, in the person. Hold on a second. Okay. Evidently, whatever they saw left. Um, if a leaf blows, they start <laughs> barking. So, the word feeds us, but not just spiritually, it's also physically. And, and at the end of this the video I'm going to do for later today, uh, I'm going to put that on there. Um, I'm going to show that. There's a bunch of scripture on it. But, you know, and I've mentioned this before, and I'll mention it in, in the next video. I've had, uh, I, I've noticed a physical effect on my body. Excuse me just one second. Dogs are so dumb. <laughs> They're barking at another dog that's 100 yards away out, out across a bunch of trees. Anyway, um, and the other one's trying to sass me on the way in the door. So, uh. In that video, I'll talk about that more in, in, in more detail of how I've noticed, me personally, a, a physical change because I spent so much time in the Word. Um, this morning, we're going to pray Psalm 32, and it kind of it kind of links to that because God feeds us. He feeds us through His Holy Bible and His Word, and it's actually amazing. I'm going to make sure my Bible is still there. It's actually amazing how much he feeds us through his word. And the more time we spend in it, the more we're nourished. It's really hard to explain, but I'll explain it in the next video. But anyway, let's get into some prayer. And we even have a commentary we're going to look at, too, um, that might shed some more light on what was going on here. Father, we come before you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ to give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. To thank you for another gorgeous day here in South Texas. To thank you for blessing the brothers and sisters around the world. <clears throat> to thank you for the answered prayers. We thank you for our food. We thank you for our clothing. We thank you for everything that you've given us, provided for us, and are doing and have done for us. <clears throat> how, can, how can anyone who has tasted your love and your goodness, who has partaken in it, turn away or deny you? I don't understand it. But people do it you feed us with everything we need you give us everything we need sometimes it's not what we think we need but it's everything we need you know how to do it perfectly and you know how and the perfect way to take care of us and we ask you to keep taking care of us keep opening our eyes to the truth keep showing us what's what the bible actually says to us Help us to understand more, to share more truth with others, and to help us help others understand the truth. 
It's a dangerous world out there. A lot of people are getting into misconception. They're getting into deception. They're getting into, they're going into, to, to deceive others. It's, yeah, it's not a good situation. And it's hard to watch people go through that stuff and get caught up in those things. Father, help us to have the right words to lead them back to the light. And to lead them back to truth. Father, this morning we'd like to pray Psalm 32. Blessed are the forgiven. A Psalm of David, a contemplation. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity and in whose spirit there is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into the drought of summer. Selah. I acknowledged my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Selah. For this cause everyone who is godly shall pray to you in a time when you may be found. Surely in a flood of great waters they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. Selah. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sparrows shall be to the wicked. Many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous. A shout for joy, all you upright in heart. And Father, we are shouting for joy. We may not do it in the body, because the body's so tired, but the spirit is jumping. Father, continue to lead us more into the light. And help us to have strong hands to grab others and to bring them into the light too. A lot of people are hung up in a lot of weird understandings. Help us to show them what your word really says. Take that judgmental spirit out of us. Take that anger and hatred and, and resentment out of us and fill that with love and mercy and kindness. Your love, your mercy, and your kindness that we may share this with everyone we come in contact with. It is in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. I love you guys. Thank you for joining me for morning prayer. Let's read this commentary real quick. The Song of the Forgiven. David wrote this psalm. And that was in Romans. He mentions it in Romans. Uh, Mascal means to give instruction. We are deeply instructed as the working of conscience. Compare with Psalm 51. There's a lot there. <laughs> This was one of Luc Lucifer's favorites. Really? Hmm, that's interesting. I'll just study into that a little more. For some time after his sin, David withheld confession and suffered terribly. It's a burden when you hold, that, hold those things in, when you don't talk to the Lord about all the things that are bothering you. But when the wound was open and poison pressed from it, he burst out in words in with which the Psalms opens. Oh, blessedness. Sin means missing the mark. Iniquity is that which is turned aside from its course. Forgiven, covered, not imputed, each of these is true in Jesus. The presence of God is always appreciable nearer when floods are running high. When, when troubles are closer, that's when people draw closer to God. Note those three precious promises of instruction, teaching, and guidance. In Psalm 32, 8, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. Throw on God the responsibility of indicating your path. Don't wait for the sharp, sharp jerk of a bit or a bridle. Let love prompt and inspire you every moment. Hayden said, when I think on God, the notes dance from my pen. Remember the music and dancing that welcomed the prodigal. Remember the prodigal son? Pretty good commentary there about that stuff. So, what's the thing that, oh, she's on the steps, okay. So, when we learn to turn towards him and turn towards his teachings, 
and start turning away from the things we think we know and, and the things of this world, it really helps us. And it's a benefit to us, not only spiritually, but physically. Because many of these psalms talk about that as we've been going through them. Talk about a physical effect. And then whenever we engage and, ex and acknowledge God, the physical effect changes. So, yeah, there's definitely a crossover <coughs> in that power contained within these scriptures and contained within how God de deals with us. It's a, it's a good thing. But when you start to see it and when you start to realize it, then it makes you much more aware of yourself and your shortcomings. And it makes you much more apt to reach out to God for help to call out to Jesus, to confess the things that you've done wrong. When you feel bad, that you, you get convicted because you did or said something, you confess it to him. Get it off your chest. Not only does he forgive it you, but the burden of it comes off of you, and it makes your life so much more peaceful. I speak from experience. It's a great, great thing to just unload that burden. Not to make yourself feel better, but to make yourself not you making yourself more righteous, but acknowledging the righteousness given to you by Jesus Christ. I love you guys. I bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next video.